Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the spindle out of this engine lathe. Uh, you know, I don't see any reason not to at least tear it apart and, and check out what's going on. So let's get to it. So this, this small toolbox contains my gearbox tools, more or less. And you'll want most of these tools if you're gonna be working on a lot of gearboxes. Uh, I've got a full set of hook spanners from I think three quarters up to five inches something like that I got it's my slide hammer and it's got various ends for it that are designed to hook onto a socket head cap screw that's a extra large set of of snap ring pliers inside and outside and then I've got a full set of of convertible snap ring pliers and then uh, safety wire pliers, pin spanners, you know, various things that you that you would run into inside of a gearbox. Alright, so the trick to this spindle is that you have to break the taper on the bearing. So this is a tapered surface right here and the inside race of the bearing is on a taper. And you have to crack that taper in order to get the spindle out. So what, they, what they've what they done is uh, <clears throat> this shield here, this is just an oil shield. They put, a, they put a hole in here, access hole, and I can stick this small punch through and tap on the, the inside of the race. There's one on the opposite side too, <clears throat> so I had to I had to push this gear forward, and then I could reach in with this small punch and tap on that inner race, and that was enough to break the break the taper. So on the on the front bearing, they were even nicer, and this is the cam lock at the back of the chuck, 
and then right here you can see these notches so what that is is this this is the the inner part of the labyrinth seal and this is actually a nut and so all I have to do is take my uh, hook spanner hook on this nut and then I can see I had to move it about three quarters of an inch this way and then it'll push on the inside race of the bearing and that will break the taper at the front bearing so that's the secret all right I'm pretty sure we've got it now so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this all the way out all right guys you're gonna have to suffer through some handheld action here for a minute so first things first Perry was right and the thrust bearing preload is set by a ground sleeve this is it right here I knew it couldn't be like it was in the picture and it makes sense now all right I don't know how well you'll be able to see this this is the front bearing outer race and you see these spots right here there's one there's two and then there's a few other a few others right right in the path and it's it's that brunelling like I was talking about so it's possible that what happened is the the machine sat for a long time and the the rollers got some contamination and they corroded the race right where the roller contacts the race uh, or it's possible that it's just it's just bearing wear but definitely these are bad alright this is the rear bearing and this one's really really chowdered so you can see this this pitting right here that that bearing is completely hooped um, the I'm not exactly sure if that's where the balls track but yeah this is at the bottom too so I don't know if that indicates that it's corrosion related but yeah that that bearing is bad okay so the input shaft that one definitely has a bad bearing too. I don't know if you can hear that. Pretty nasty. So this counter shaft, we talked about this one before. That one's definitely got a bad bearing too. So I think that all the headstock bearings are the same. So I'll probably just replace them all. The bottom counter shaft seems okay. It sounds pretty good. Okay, here we are. I did not need another machine torn apart in my shop, but um, yeah, we definitely found a smoking gun. So the thrust bearing is has some minimal damage, but it definitely has some some problems with the with the races. It's going to get replaced. The rear bearing is completely hooped. The front bearing is completely hooped, and like I said, we've got a couple of the regular ball bearings in the in the other shafts that are bad too. So. Alright, so I went ahead and stripped the entire headstock. Just took me about about three more hours to do that. So everything's out now. And I want to want to do a few things. I want to replace all the bearings because if if two or three of them are bad, then the chance uh, chance is that the rest of them won't be far behind. So I'll replace all the Chinese bearings. And then here and here is where the shafts come through for the shift mechanism and I want to replace those o-rings that is leaking and there's a few other problems here so they painted the inside of the gearbox which is a good thing but if you can see like in this corner the paint's starting to peel and there's all kinds of trash inside this box there's no filter in this recirculating pump so I'm not sure if I should strip that out or I need to do something with it to keep it out of the bearings okay so there's pieces of, th of this thing pretty much everywhere and uh, as soon as I find some bearings we'll we'll get started putting it back together so hope you guys remember where everything goes <laughs> 